we were talking about a mind disaster. Yeah. And that happened April 5th of uh, 2010. Yes. And correct. Today's the 14th anniversary. And uh, it was. So uh, tell me more about that disaster. Men. Yeah. 29 men died uh, as Mont Cole, West Virginia. And the upper big branch mine is, a, I mean, it's a sprawling mine complex, huge, huge mine complex. And it was a long wall. And there was a lot of, uh, a lot of controversy around it after it happened, like between MSHA being there and, uh, that's the federal agency that oversees mines. And yeah. then the West Virginia Department of Miners Health and Safety being there, uh, I mean, it was so. I guess to to explain why it happened the way it did, you got to go back a little farther to 2006. Um, we had another. We had a belt fire. Our route three, and Joe Manchin, who is currently our senator, one of our senators, he was governor at the time. And when you're in the mines, there's a phone system and a radio yeah. system. That can, you can contact the surface. Well, what happened with that particular belt fire, the men decided they couldn't get out on the tracks. So they decided to go to the base and they used curtain, like real thick, heavy curtain to, uh, hold on one second. Oh, you're fine. They used real thick, heavy curtain to like wall themselves in. Yeah. And they ended up running out of air. Well, they had made the mistake of telling their families they were alive. Told them everybody was fine and they were coming out. Oh, son of a bitch. Well, they had gotten, yeah, they had gotten misinformation and then come to find out all of them were actually, all but one were actually dead. And so I tell you that because that changed the way that people were informed about mine and disasters. Like I said, all the laws are written in blood. And yeah. So that mistake changed it all. And so when this happened, that put people in a, like the family and friends of 29, 29 individuals were asked to go to the training center and wait. And I mean, they waited literally days or days to find out if their loved ones had made it. I mean, can you can you imagine like your your brother, your husband, your dad is in that mine? They go to that mine every night. Yeah. And nobody they don't think anything about it. Like we literally don't we do think about it. You know what I mean? We all we pray before we go underground and we're safe. But you gotta put it in the other, back or it's you, you gotta to. put it in the back or it's gonna drive you nuts. Exactly. You have to put it in the back of your head, man, but you always have to be cognizant of it, of course. But yeah, there was a um there was an issue with the amount of rock dust that they had. Like rock dust is a, uh, it's crushed up limestone with a, with a lot of the silica taken out. The silica is yeah. one of the main components that causes you know, some real serious lung issues. And uh, so we have to put that on the, on the ribs, the walls in the mines to keep the coal dust down. Cause yeah. the coal dust is very, very flammable. Combustible is a better word, not flammable. Combustible because it explodes. So there's a methane gas leaking into the mine. Uh, the methane detector is not working correctly on the long wall. And there's not enough rock dust on the ribs to contain it. Right. So when it explodes, it explodes. Right. And you know, not everybody that was underground died, no. But everybody that was in a few mile radius of the long wall did. And right. I mean, you know, Don Blankenship, who was the uh, president of Massey Energy at the time, it was their coal mines. And it was just, I mean, I wasn't a coal miner, man, you know, but from an outsider's point of view, one year in jail for the guy who cut corners to save money. And didn't get those men the proper equipment to run a safe coal mine. Right, deserved more than one year in prison. In my I, mind, I, I agree. I agree, and it's and, it's amazing how how these people, in the name of money, 
get away with yeah. doing stuff like that because you know because he saved well let's just say 10 10 grand and and killed 20 29 would you yeah. say 29 workers 29 men yeah well, 29 that's... men died that day 14 years ago today 29 men died to save a millionaire a couple more men yeah and that's disgusting I mean, and that's so that's, no. that's what and we were talking he about the, he had the balls to run for governor yeah yeah, she, well, he, stuff like that happens yeah. here all the time. Um, not not like uh, where twenty nine miners were were killed, um, but uh, our local government here doesn't give two shits about the working man. They don't care. Yeah, they only care about money, and that's <laughs> bottom line. And yeah. uh, there's, as a matter of fact, we have a conservative uh republican in office and when the pandemic when the pandemic hit uh, we were still dealing with shutdown after shutdown after shutdown no. thankfully thankfully our local city here had isolated itself so much like we uh, and all our grocery stores here except for you know like walmart and all the big ones our grocery stores here had stepped out of their normal supply chain and were ordering things that were, you know, gouged prices. And we had all, exp oh. we had all explained to them, like, we don't care what we have to pay. Just get us yeah. the things that we need and we'll worry about the rest later. So we had local grocery stores here doing, stepping outside of those supply chains, paying $10 a roll for toilet paper just to get it in yeah. the door. So people like me, because I don't, you know, I'm going to have shit paper. I'm sorry. I'm going to. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. If I got to pay $10 a roll for it, then thank God I didn't have to because my mother in law yeah. is a hoarder and she <laughs> actually, so she actually had plenty for the whole family. But they, uh, is she a they hoarder or is she a couponer? No, she's a hoarder. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. My mother in law is a couponer, and I mistook it, mistook it for hoarding multiple times. <laughs> now, this so my mother in law, she'll she'll buy a pallet of things that she don't need wow. just because it's on sale. Yeah, so nice. Yeah, she's. I mean, it's kind of handy to have around though, because if you it ever need be. anything, if you ever need anything, just call her up. And she's probably yeah. about twelve of them. Right. But uh, I forgot where I was going with that. But well, you were uh, talking about the pandemic and how they were bringing oh, in yeah, stuff yeah. from outside their source, normal sources. So. And so we we had actually got away with, uh, you know, not not feeling the effects of the supply chain here locally where i live we didn't have any issues here i'm sure it was difficult to get parts at some point but mm -hmm. i'm like i drive a 20 year old vehicle i didn't have any issues getting parts for it and i yeah. didn't have any issues getting parts for my son's 20 year old truck so we didn't really notice when those things happen but like i like i said we've got a conservative in office and uh we still dealt with all those shutdowns that we shouldn't have to deal, yeah. deal with and i didn't think it was going to affect us as much as it did but a couple years later here we are we're in bad financial straight you know bad financial distress here because mm -hmm. of those shutdowns like we've got businesses that closed restaurants that'll never be open again um and and non-essential businesses like bowling alleys and stuff and that, like stuff mm -hmm. like that they they suffered a lot and i'm like thankfully Bad. thankfully one of our bowling alleys has i mean our bowling alleys here have like bars in them and yeah. bars were essential so thankfully they were able to stay open but our movie theater closed and it's never been back open. It was a brand new movie oh, theater when they opened. That sucks. And so now I'm not positive. It may have opened already, but every time I go up there, it's empty and nobody's ever there. So I'm assuming it's closed. Yeah. It's still closed. Yeah. And now we, uh, we saw it. I mean, the biggest, in my opinion, the biggest hit we took, from and this, you know, people might disagree. The biggest hit I think our country in general took was people finding out that they could work from home. Oh yeah, I like, was one of those people. That to me, like 
I just, I don't know, maybe it's me, maybe it's the people I was raised around or raised by, but no, and, and we've talked about this, like, I do my best not to live to work anymore, like I did yeah. when I was younger. Yeah. I want to spend more time with my family, and, you know, I'd die envy you being able to stay at home with kids, like, that would be amazing. It would have been amazing for me to have been able to do that at one point in time, but, like, I just feel like if you don't get up and go out of the house, and do something, you kind of forget that the outside world's there. And I think it's leading to a lot of the strife between the classes of people or yeah. just different kinds of people in general. I mean, if you don't ever, if you don't leave your six block radius yeah. for X amount of days, like there's stuff going on. Yeah, if you there. don't get outside your echo chamber. You yeah, know, and I mean that's, that's essentially, essentially what, what it's got. Yeah. And I mean so, that, and that's I tried to work from home uh, during that that whole uh, like I was mentioning. I work for Sprint, working on the phones, mm -hmm. and uh, it was that whole company that it, it was it was a third party company that did stuff for Sprint. So I worked for the third party company taking phone calls, and I didn't just take phone calls for Sprint. I did a couple other things like uh, uh, food benefits for our state and, and multiple states, and uh, Hulu, Disney, I worked for them and took calls for them, mm -hmm. but I started out in the office and I, th I was one of those type of people that thought, oh, you work from homes available. Let's try that out. Brother, I couldn't do it. I, I, no. I sat, I sat in my room, my bedroom I used as an office. If now, if I had this, this is quite a bit bigger room. Would have been different. Yeah. It's more friendly. And it's, I mean, it, I, I made this like it was going to be my hangout spot and I hardly ever mm. come out here except when I'm recording. <laughs> so uh, my wife works out here more than I do. Yeah. But uh, so what it is, it, it, I was feeling like the walls were closing in on me because I had to have quiet. So it means I couldn't, I couldn't be have, I couldn't have the door open to the kids and everything like that. Yeah. And I, I just, the color of my room is green. And I felt like the walls were closing in on me. And of course, I got up every morning, got dressed like I was leaving the house and tried to take care of myself mentally. But it was ultimately, I felt paranoid getting up to go to the bathroom while I was yeah. while I was doing this job because they monitor your mouse and everything and make sure you're working and all that. I didn't want to, I smoke cigarettes, so I didn't want to take time out of my breaks to, you know, have yeah. to take five minutes and go to the bathroom i was like well i'm gonna go smoke and yeah. <laughs> uh because i i don't smoke in the house or i would have i would have smoked yeah. while i was working but uh that that was one of those weird things that i thought that i was gonna like that i absolutely hated it now on the other side of that coin my sister was a remote worker before the pandemic and after the pandemic, they they had told her that uh, she had to make precedence and come back to to the office. She had to make a sacrifice and come back to the office so they could get everybody else to come back. And so she was really unhappy. <laughs> that doesn't with make that. any sense. No, it <laughs> yeah, don't make, make any sense, sense at all. all. But but they. I mean, spent... here's the thing: you're employing somebody. Yeah. If you tell them they got to work in the office, they got to work in the office. They don't They're, like it. They that's clean. right. That's right. And I guess it's what they call toxic work culture nowadays. I've been seeing that buzzword on the internet a lot, toxic work culture. Uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, we didn't have that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have that. I don't have yeah. that now in the coal mines. I'm pretty sure I don't have that. Uh, to be uh, honest do, with you, like, to be honest with you, I'd much rather have. I, I mean, you know, I can't. And of course, this is all, you know, off the record and my own personal opinion. But I would much rather have the toxic workplace because I the toxic too. work the toxic workplace is great and funny and yeah um, exactly when you got the camaraderie with the guys and you can say whatever it is that you want to say without fear of losing your job because you said something that somebody else finds offensive well fuck them you know yeah, that's pretty much. that's that's how I ended up in the spot that I am now because I can't work for other people. Because mm -hmm. I can't say what I want. I can't do the things that I want. And most of the time, you know, if I know what I'm doing, you can just leave me alone. Like, you don't have to talk yeah. to me. 
and I'm perfectly fine. I can show up, do my job and clock out all on my own. I don't need you. <laughs> and, <laughs> exactly. I, I would much rather have the camaraderie with a bunch of guys just like me, as opposed to people that I have to watch my tongue, watch what I say around mm -hmm. and exactly. self self centric self censorship here in 2024 is a huge problem. Like we should yeah. be able to speak whatever we, you know, we should be able to speak our minds without fear of losing our jobs, you know, as long as we're not talking about our jobs or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, underground, I can say anything I want to anybody I please, but once you hit the surface again, man, there's, there's people out there keeping an eye on that. Right. And in the I courts, mean, they don't you know, understand, Hey, we're a bunch of coal miners down here. You know, they don't, they don't look at it like that. They look at yeah, it. Was the same thing with, it was the class. same way in the kitchen, man. It was the same way in the kitchen. And right. we didn't have like the kitchen. I, I watched my mouth a lot because we did have younger, we had like teenagers, uh, young girls as hostesses and stuff like right. that. And, you know, I had young girls at the time, so I'd watch what I would say around them. But I mean, it's, it's Katie bar the door when you're on the ground side. You can right. literally nothing, nothing is off limits. <laughs> and and I love about. that. I love that. <laughs> and I wish, I yeah. wish, I wish life on the surface could be like that even uh um, it used to when, be when, man, we're not I swear when we were it, it kids did. it did we used to be i used to be able to walk down the street and 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 be able to say whatever i wanted to, mm -hmm. to let's just say my wife and if somebody overheard it they overheard it and just kept walking yeah. these days man if something's if somebody's got a problem with what there's with what you're saying because of social media and not being not having the fear of being punched in the mouth is what I call it. Yeah. Not having oh, yeah, that 100%. fear. It, it causes people to lose their minds sometimes. It really does. Really I've been out in public idea. and people have said something to me and I've been like, you know what? Like if you knew who I was, you know, if you knew <laughs> yeah. you wouldn't be saying that, you know, yeah. and I've I, had I just similar like, situations. Yeah. Uh, we, we've got, uh, and it's a sad situation. The crime's up here and violent crime uh we that's people horrible. shoot you for that around here yeah and I, I, that's just the kind of city i live in now if i was to go outside of the city no people aren't like that just even five miles yeah. outside of the city it's not like that but here in this city it's just it's a lot of poor people a lot of drugs and uh yeah. a lot of just bad terrible influence well poverty I, breeds crime i mean there's no doubt yeah. about that yeah. I mean, and it's it, it depends like people you know some people are born into it and thrive and make better out of, you know they make a better situation for themselves and then other people are born into it and pass it on to the next generation i mean yeah and that's that's kind of sad because uh, it's like it doesn't yeah. take much it it's it's it i really and and now this is probably something terrible to say, and it's extremely middle class to say something like this, but um, poor is a mindset, man. You, oh, 100%. You, you can be, you can not have a damn dime to your name and be the richest person in the world, in, oh, in yeah. my opinion. I mean, we, we both grew up there. I mean, I, we, we weren't dirt floor poor. You know what I mean? I went to school with some kids who literally had dirt floors. You know what I mean? Like rural West Virginia, there there's still people who – live in shanty i mean that's yeah. just how it is yeah um i mean you've seen the whitakers on soft white underbelly that the inbred family yeah, yeah. West Virginia. okay i mean that's that's legit that that is here and yeah. I'm, I'm not ashamed of it i mean we are we're in the we're in the mountains man and we are segregated from the rest of the country and we're glad we're happy about it. we're glad yeah, we were Ohio just River. talking about hill people yeah. earlier yeah. Exactly. We're glad the Ohio River's to our left and the Appalachian Mountains are our right because that's where we want to be alone. We don't need uh, anybody else messing with us. But no, I, I, I mean, right there we, where you're at, you got everything you need too. We really do. I've told yeah. people that for years, man. We don't need anybody else. We can maintain on our own. Absolutely. The only thing we might be missing is enough farmable land, enough flat land to farm, but we can take care of that yeah. by exporting some more coal, flatten a couple mountains down, and we'll have plenty of farmland. Exactly. But, yeah. Yeah. Like we both grew up with not a lot. And it seems to me from the little time I've known you 
and both of us are doing pretty well for ourselves yeah. considering yeah. where we came from. And so our kids had it a little better than we did. Yeah. And their kids will have it a bit a little better than they did. And our families can say that, you know, we pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps, however you want to say it, but we worked for it. Right. And I don't agree. I'm not saying let people starve. I'm not saying let people stay on the streets in the middle of the winter. I'm just saying put forth a little effort and good things are going to come your way. Yeah, you, you like, get out what you put in, man. Absolutely, you, really you get out what you put life. in. That is life, and people seem to have lost that. I don't know where. I don't know where the disconnect is. Like, is it our age? Like, is it a generational thing? Is it? Uh, I think because clearly it's lot. not geographic. It's not geographic because we are on two totally different parts of the country. Right, right, and and like it, and, it things are totally different here than they are in Texas. And in Texas, things are totally different there than they are up north. And yeah. up north, completely different than west or east. So uh, th that's one, uh, something I, I, I kind of find funny is, you know, the British and the United States have this big, you know, there are, our citizens have this uh, pissing contest all, all, yeah. all the time. And usually what I say to them is, hey, 1776, that's all I right? can say. I mean, you know, but, uh, <laughs> you know, there's there's a lot of groups on Facebook and stuff, and I've talked to a lot of British folks, and, you know, there's this that the United States does wrong, that the United States does wrong. And, and here's what I tell those people. I think one thing that uh, that I've noticed is they talk about kettles and how Americans don't use kettles. And I... And I said, that's, you know, that's not accurate. I have two kettles in my house myself, you know, yeah. and it's the majority of Americans do not have kettles in their homes. But those Americans that do have kettles in their homes outnumbers your entire, your entire country's right. population. Right. So <laughs> our minority, yeah. our minority here outweighs your entire country. Yeah. 100%. And I have to remind them, you know, like when they talk about culture in the United States, what does that even mean? Because my there culture is, is completely mean. different from yours and yeah, your culture 100%. is completely different from somebody in New York, you know? And so the United States is so huge that a lot of people don't, you know, in other countries in Europe, especially, they don't think about that. They don't think about how I can drive for two days and still be in the state that I live in, you know, yeah. and they don't think about, you know, it takes like from here to Florida. I drove from here, Kansas city area to uh, Orlando, Florida. It took me 24 hours. Yeah. And so like, that's a lot, like we had two drivers, you know, so I wasn't driving just by myself. Oh yeah. Yeah. We did 12 hours. One person drove the next 12 hours. The other person 12 drove, but if you were in Europe, that'd take you two days and you'd be three countries away from where you started, you know? Easy. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, I like, mean, our I, states are the size of most countries. Right. And I, just explaining that, and and usually it the argument doesn't go too far past that, but it's just, I like to remind people like, hey, the United States is bigger than what you think it is. And yeah, I mean, that's like, that's no different. Sea to shining sea means something. Yeah. Exactly. So the English have a culture, the Irish have a culture, the Scotch have a culture, and they're all and they're in one kingdom. They're in one, one kingdom, government. smaller, smaller than most of our states. Right. But they expect us to be, I mean, yeah, we're in the United States, but we can't be that united. We right. come from all over the world. The only people who were originally here, there's like 12 of them left. Right. And somehow they got fucked and the only thing they got was gambling. Like that's it. Like that's all we gave. That's now all that's, gave. I've got a controversial take on that. Really? I want to hear that. So the American Indians, uh, I I don't call them American Indians, uh, Native Americans. Yeah. So the Native Americans tried to screw over the white man. Yeah. When when the deals were done. What had happened was the white man came to 
the Native Americans and were like, hey, we're going to purchase this land from you for X amount of dollars, weapons, you know, whatever, whatever we have to do in trade, we're going to make this trade. Yeah. And the Native Americans were like, you know, the white man thinks he can sell land. How cute. And yeah, so exactly. they went ahead, they went ahead with the deal, not knowing that the white man's willing to kill for that deal. Yeah, and this is true. This is true. So, yeah. so the Native Americans went on, they they agreed to the deal and then they tried to go back on the deal. Once they realized uh, they were they were starting to lose land and they were starting to lose rights and everything, they were like, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. And the in the United States government was like, hey, you agreed to this. You literally yeah. agreed to it. And so fast forward, you know, a couple hundred years. And when it came down to those reservations or whatever, what those were was the land that the uh, Native Americans had asked for back. Yeah. And so they don't they don't pay taxes on that land. They can pretty much do whatever they want to on that land. Now, I'm not saying that they didn't get screwed over, but I mean... There's no reason why I should have to pay for that today. There's no reason why you should have to no, pay for that not. today. There's not. There's and, not. Uh, I agree with that 100%. Like that's that's now, a controversial take that not a lot of people like, but I no, mean, I, my I family's Native American, from. so. I get where you're coming from, and that's that whole my family's Native American, that shit ain't gonna fly. <laughs> I'm not backing you because of that. I'm backing you because I understand where you're coming from. Like, that argument that my family's part, so I can say this, and uh, that see, that's one of those racist that. arguments that people come up with. Yeah, <laughs> I, I that, get it. Yeah, yeah. So I see, I I see that side of it. I do see that side of it as well. But I guess when you look at it from, because you can't look at it with a uh, point of view from twenty twenty four, right? Right, because times were different. Right. But there is no time limit on stuff like smallpox blankets and the Trail of Tears. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I agree with that. That shit absolutely. is wrong. No I absolutely how agree. You look at it, that shit's wrong. Okay. But the idea that they were peaceful people was crazy. They weren't peaceful. They were fighting amongst each other before the whites got here or the Spanish got here, whoever the hell you want to say, before the Vikings got here, before anybody got here, they were fighting amongst themselves. For Absolutely. the same reasons that they ended up fighting with the R people that came in. But I, I don't know. It's like, did did were they actually done a favor by no, being given no, reservations no, and no. gambling? Or Absolutely did that not. honestly breed more? Like we were talking about. It's the company store, man. It, it's it the is. company it store. Really That's exactly what that is. We were we were actually talking about script and company yeah. stores, company towns. That's exactly what a reservation is. You stay over there. You can do whatever you want. We're not going to help you. We're not going to yeah, get resources. Not... We're not going to get. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. Because you can't have a sovereign nation inside a bigger nation. No, you can't. It's just not. I mean, you can say that your borders are sovereign and that you can do what you want. But you only have X amount of land, and you can't do everything you need to do on that land. You, you're forced to work with the outside government. Right. And, I mean, telling people it's okay to gamble, you can have your alcohol without tax, you can have your tobacco without tax. Like, freeing people of taxes is not something you do for an oppressed people. That's something you do for the fucking hardworking people. Yeah. You give something back. Yeah. And, I, I don't know, it's like, it's almost like the same as busing in the 60s. You know what I mean? Like nothing that we've done to try to bring everybody together has ever brought everybody together. Right, if right. If anything, it's divided us more because this will sound horrible, but people who have an, uh, similar ideas and similar cultures are going to naturally gravitate to one another. Yeah. And trying to force different people together is not good for anybody. Right. It's not helping anybody. It's, it's causing more, more rift than anything. So, I don't know. I feel like they got screwed in the long run. Should they have worked their way out of it by now? Well, I think there was certain, <laughs> I, I think there was certain laws and, and, and stuff set up to where they can't, you know, yeah, I, yeah. 
to a certain point. Like, well, if you want to, if you want to keep what you were given, no. Right. But if you want to come outside those boundaries and play the same game we play out here, yeah. there's nothing stopping you. Right. But you're an American citizen as much as you are a citizen of your own small sovereign nation. Yeah, and I, I was actually listening to a uh, podcast yesterday. Oh hell, it was what it was about was a uh, it was David Satter was the um, he was an author he is an author that's his name is David Satter and we he was talking about Stalin and the Red Terror in in Russia yeah. and and how that all that ended up and it, the, a lot of the stuff that happened with the American Indians reminds me a lot of uh, American Indians. There we go. Um, Native Americans. Uh, yeah. It reminded me a lot of the things that uh, that the Soviet Union did to their people, you know, later. Like, of course, this was after, you know, we, we had our issue with the Native Americans. And actually, that's actually happening in China right now with the yeah. Uyghur population and, uh, and and in Ukraine it's it, it's not as targeted in Ukraine as it is in China but in Ukraine they're 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 kidnapping their children and and bringing them to Russia to re reeducate them and to yeah. the Russian way of thinking and that's essentially the same thing that we tried to do to the American Indians and it's still happening yeah there was some horrible things done there were some horrible things done from Everywhere in North America, yeah, to the native people. I mean, it was it's not. <clears throat> excuse me, it wasn't just us. I mean, the Canadian government was equally as bad, if not worse. And like, but Ukraine had already got it once. I mean, there was the famine yeah. caused by Stalin, and I'm, how yeah. many people? Three million people. Yeah, and I, I, as a matter of fact, I think it, it even started before Stalin. I think it was uh, Lenin that started all that stuff, and then, and okay, then yeah, it just it got Lenin, worse under right, Stalin, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, those people have had it pretty rough, too. At Chernobyl, like, yeah. these people really had a rough go of it in the 19th. You know, the, the 20th century was bad for Ukraine. There's no question. Yeah. When I was in high school, a little church – in Elkview, West Virginia, Pinch, West Virginia, that area, actually brought kids from Ukraine who lived near Chernobyl to the United yeah. States during the summer for nine weeks. And, like, they lived with families and got to go be a married. All of them, all they ever wanted was Levi's. It's crazy. Like, they just wanted to take Levi's back to the communist USSR at the time. And that's totally off subject, but that's a small world. You know what I mean? Like, I met yeah. a little girl from Belarus like years ago. I've tried to look her up on Facebook with, to no avail, but I have no idea how to spell her name. It probably has like 14 letters I've never seen before in it and stuff. But I mean, it was, it was an I interesting. Think, to I actually think Facebook's not. Uh, so in Russia, Facebook is, is not, <laughs> is banned in Russia. So you can't use oh, it in Russia. And Be that. Belarus yeah. is very similar uh, in, yeah. in laws to Russia. So. Of, yeah, there's probably no way I would ever find that little girl. And uh, she's not, she's an adult woman now, but yeah, I'm yeah. Just curious what happened to her. Like, What I find cool helpful is, is Telegram when I'm trying to, when I'm trying to speak to uh, people over there is I use Telegram a lot because it ah. automatically translates, but I, oh, I don't, cool. uh, I quit talking to people over there because of the amount of misinformation that was coming over and like and Russian hackers and all that stuff. I don't, I don't want to get involved. So <laughs> I ain't got time for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the news is about as much as I can handle on that shit because it's just scary. But I mean, how much of it do you? I don't know what to believe, what not to believe. Like I've, I've worked myself into a frenzy studying United States history on my own and listening to podcasts about United States history and. You know, I listen to something and then I go and read about it and watch other videos about it. Yeah. I don't want to just listen to Dan Cummins. You know what I mean? I love. I call I love that going time, down the rabbit hole. Suck, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, but I love Time Suck. By the way, if you don't listen to it, you should. Time um, Suck. Yeah, with Dan, the comedian Dan Cummins. Not my that dude's that hilarious, and that is a great podcast. But uh, like, I listen to that and then I'll look into it myself and you know, kind of look into certain stuff and like. I just wonder, like my my father-in-law, for instance, 
Like he 100% believed that everything going on over there is the fault of Putin. And the reason he believes that is because he's a 63 year old man who grew up during the cold war. And he went through like, they were ending the nuclear bomb drills when I was a kid. Right. Yeah, and I, I remember them. I, so I was born in 85. And yeah. when I was in first grade, I remember doing those drills. And that was 1991, yeah. 92. Exactly. So I was born in 79. We did them in elementary school. But after that, they were gone. Nothing was ever said about it. Like, I, I remember like once Bill Clinton was elected, I guess. I think it was and yeah that Bill was Clinton 96 yeah I think that's when we just quit hearing about communism like communism the, the red army like the iron curtain came down and communism was no longer our biggest problem like you know Reagan had kind of turned it around a little bit and it was like yeah. I'm not so worried about the communists because he went over there and made friends with Gorbachev and then they were like and Nancy was like say no to drugs and none of us listened and like our lives changed a lot in the yeah. 80s and 90s. And maybe it's just because that's when we were growing up. You know what I mean? But the world changed in my eyes a lot in the 80s and 90s. Absolutely. And like thing, and then like, you know, I talked to my father-in-law about it. And like it's crazy because you can go on YouTube and watch the war live. Yeah. And like we're watching, he's like, I, you know, I recorded this earlier. I want you to see this. This is what they're doing to these guys. And I'm like, but are they though? Yeah, how much of that is accurate? Yeah, so the propaganda, the the propaganda machine coming out of Ukraine at the very beginning. Yes, it was heavy. Yes, it was one sided, but they were showing the truth. Yes, it was was skewed a little bit in the West's favor, but they were showing real footage. They were showing, you know. That's never been done before. This is the most, this has got to be the most documented uh, conflict that there ever has been. Oh, surely. I mean, because you can still, you can still, like, like I'd mentioned Telegram just a few minutes ago, you can still get on Telegram and find current information going on, you know, inside Ukraine, but it's all propaganda. And like you said, you don't know how much of it to believe. Like, you can probably believe what you're seeing is actually happening, but you can't tell which side is who you can't tell if it's Russian, Ukraine, you can't tell if it's us, them. And like when I found out our CIA is on the ground in, in Ukraine, I was like, that's yeah. And that's been like, this is new information. (laughs) It's, it's actually not. They, they talk about it on the news. To me, this is new information. (laughs) They talk about it on the How news and that? everything and uh, on mainstream media, even that our CIA has been on the ground since the very beginning advising and they're sharing. Oh, and it is, oh I knew we were there in an advisory role. Yeah. I didn't yeah. realize it was You CIA, know what they're but... doing. They're What they're doing is they're taking our information. And so we don't have to directly give it to them. We're, we've got CIA over there, so our intelligence services can transfer information to CIA. CIA can transfer to the Ukrainian government. So there yeah. is a go-between. That way they're not getting in. They're not, you know, uh, yeah. because our systems are, now they're not, they're not as good as they could be probably, but they're the best in the world. You know, yeah. like oh, yeah. there, sure. there are satellite systems that nobody knows about that, like the Russian government, you know, the United States government, the Chinese government, they're, they all have satellites that nobody knows about. Oh, I'm sure. But yeah. We have sensors all over the, all over the United States, all over satellites, but we also have sensors in the, in the water all over the world. And that's what our Navy has been doing for the last 80 years is collecting data from the sea and setting up certain certain things and like we were talking about the ufos earlier the reason why a lot of the footage that we can't see that they've gotten is because they were in places where they shouldn't have been and they've 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 come out and said hey a lot of these sensitive platforms were in sensitive places at the time and that's why you're never going to see the video because we weren't supposed to be there to begin with but and, it's, I mean, it's basically common knowledge now that, that aliens yeah. are real. 
Like yeah. that's common now. Like it, it's yeah. been. No, I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's aliens though. I'm th I'm leaning in more of like a extra temporal, like a extra dimensional. I'm still foreign, still alien, I guess. Yeah, yeah, but not alien in the sense like Carl Sagan. Right, you know, galaxies right. away. But I guess I mean traveling between dimensions uh, would be maybe easier than traveling light years. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a physicist. That's, that's essentially <laughs> kind of what, that's essentially what they're saying is they would theoretically it's impossible. Yeah. But if it was possible, it would be easier to travel in between dimensions using wormholes, portals, etc. Yeah. Then it would be to travel at light speed. And you know, even sense. even at light speed at you know a going you, you, it still take a long time to get out of our galaxy and oh, into yeah. another galaxy. And and so extra dimensional, it could be also inter interplanetary, you know, because it's like, you know, our our galaxy here and then the next galaxy is so far away, you know, like yeah. when you're if there's a wormhole, you could pop in here. In, in in a different galaxy and pop into our galaxy and we'd never know. And yeah. so the 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 government, uh the United States government, NASA, anybody that's tracked these UFOs or UAPs don't know where they're coming from and they don't know where they're going when they leave. And so Not they bad, but... they do track them out in space, but they don't know where they're going. Yeah. So Yeah, I mean there's only so far you can watch. I mean, look where they're just gone. Right. And it's and and I and when they're going 20, 30,000 miles per hour inside our atmosphere, yeah. you know, that's that should be impossible, you know. Yeah, 100 percent. And then you hit you hit no atmosphere, they're really kicking ass out there. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And what there, kind of drive really system would do that, you know? What kind of propulsion I, system? It's insane. I mean, it's gotta be that antimatter shit, right? Like <laughs> whatever that is. Like, I don't well, understand that, it, but I've heard them say there's it. a there's been a lot of podcasts talking about uh, anti-gravity lately. And uh, there's this one podcast, I can't remember, it's something, an alchemist. Uh, anyway, he had that, uh, he had that fella on David Grush, who was yeah. the UFO whistleblower that came out and said, <sighs> we're back engineering alien crafts and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, he was on American Alchemy. That's it. Jesse... Gosh, I, Jesse Michaels, and that's mm -hmm. that's the guy's name. And he had a show on not too long ago about anti gravitics and the grandfather of anti gravit gravitics. And it's a hundred percent possible that huh. the United States government has perfected this idea over the last eighty years and not telling anybody about it. But I'm I'm almost certain if it was the United States that had all this capability. If it was perfected, you know, they'd be speaking English in China right now. You know what I mean? You would think so, yeah. You would yeah. think so. Hey, my phone is going to die. Um, I have really enjoyed this. Absolutely. Um, hey, man, we can we can get on and do it again sometime. And that's like what I'm I thinking. You want to uh, you want to try to maybe shoot for Monday or Tuesday and that, start that a part awesome. two, and then I mean you can post it whenever you want, and we'll just continue it until we actually can meet in person. Absolutely. I mean, so. I was, We'll say that sounds like an excellent plan, man. I, I've, yeah, I, I'm stoked that it went this well. I've had I a am great too, time. Man. I'm really happy about it. I have to. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I just realized, I mean, it's like 120. I've used 100% of my battery. I've charged it full <laughs> beforehand. Like, I, I, I should have been in bed two hours, three hours ago, but I'm not, you know what I mean? I was having a great time talking to you. So, absolutely. Say, I yeah, appreciate like, your time, Al. Uh, oh, yeah, no problem at all, Rick. Thank you very much. And, um, yeah, we'll connect Monday or Tuesday, and we can pick up where we left off, and we'll eventually get around to coal mining and chef and stuff like that. But I mean, oh yeah, I had just as much fun talking about this. So absolutely. So <laughs> let's do this. I'll I'll actually yeah. uh, we'll we'll uh I'm sure we'll text at some point this weekend, and oh, we'll yeah. get together and figure out a plan. But for uh for now, we'll see you guys later. All right, brother. Have a good one. You too, buddy. We'll see you. All right, we'll see you. Bye bye.